child to fall down. How do you fix that eye so like the kingdom? A ton of explosive, a wrecking ball, a clown. Oh, it's a million dollars in the price tag. About the same as the kingdom here on tag. So why should the city pay a hundred thousand bucks a day when it's easier just to blow it off the map? Oh, how do you solve a problem like the kingdom? Welcome, welcome to our 11th season. Thank you. We went away, we went away, we, were, we spent this wonderful summer. We came back, the whole world has changed. The Seahawks, they've moved to the UW. The Sonics are headed for Tacoma, so is CBS. Channel 11 is moving from Tacoma to Seattle. The Symphony is moving from the center to downtown, and this is really, it's really ticking off Jeff Renner because he says all this movement is, it's really thrown off his Doppler radar. So he doesn't know much about We gotta stop that. So, the Seahawks are at Husky Stadium, and, and they're already on probation. Have you heard that? They've been put on probation. No, no, no. No, no Husky jokes today. Whoa! Oh, no, not the, uh, the Huskies. Huskies were definitely not the joke that some people thought they might be, you know. <laughs> Those, those commentators in the first half in Miami, well, the Hurricanes are obviously dominant, and, this, and then comes the second half, you, if you watch it, you all some, you know, I always said the Huskies had a great team, didn't you? I always said, good, solid coaching. So that's great, you know. It's good, maybe some of that luck will rub off on the Seahawks, although they don't, they don't allow the sale of alcohol at Husky Stadium, which, as you know, has been, yes, been very hard on most of the Seahawk fans because about halfway through last game, they began to sober up, and a lot of them started asking, what happened to Largent? <laughs> <laughs> what happened to Steve Largent? It's a good thing, really. I guess it's a good, it's for the best, you know. Coach Tom Flores, he was so excited to be playing in an open-air stadium on a beautiful day that his facial expression almost changed, which was wonderful. <laughs> Now, the Sonics, on the other hand, they will be playing in Tacoma because we tore down the Coliseum on purpose. See, it was wrecked with you know, big cranes. They came in and knocked it down. Now, to wreck the kingdom, we just had to turn on a hose. Just put a hose in. <laughs> Turns out, the only, the only thing holding the kingdom together, apparently, was dirt, which is interesting. <laughs> The Adobe Dome. I don't know. We got you know, something. Husky Stadium already has fallen down. So it is, you know. So you get one. So you get one. You know. So I guess it's okay. So all our stadiums have to go down. We build them just one fall. Anyway, next year the Sonics will play in the Tacoma Dome, and if they lose, I think basically what we're going to have to do is just shut down I-5 to let Coach Carl drive home, because no one wants to be on the road. Ah! You know the way that guy. Just right there. Now, if you remember, uh, Gary Payton said in the Seattle Times, this was reported last year, he said that he had sex up to an hour before game time. So, I guess you can expect to see him getting a lot of speeding tickets, basically, this year. <laughs> on the way to the game. But you have to figure, don't you, that the person most upset about the move to Tacoma has got to be the Sonics' 12th man, Steve Scheffler. The reserve. Steve, yes, Scheffler, who now... Great guy, but he's got to drive all the way to Tacoma just to take a shower. And that's just got to, you know. 
Yeah, yeah. And all the changes in the media, you know, KXRX is now Young Country, and Cairo bought King Radio, and Como owns KVI. But the big news is that CBS has left Cairo and gone to Tacoma. So now, at Cairo, no more Murphy Brown or no more 60 Minutes, and they've got to fill up their time with some new shows. And uh, they actually do have some great things on tap. And in the spirit of teamwork and cooperation, we want to we want to show you some of the new shows you'll be seeing <laughs> on the new Cairo. So take a look. Coming soon on Cairo. The Roberts Group, looking at the serious issues of today. Now here's moderator Jack Roberts. Issue number one. The health care reform process. What do you think, Mary Adams? Well, Jack, I think it's a crime. With yes, it is a crime. But it's an even bigger crime if you don't come and see Jack Roberts. I'll give you $1,000 if I can't beat your best deal. Plus, we won't be undersold. Health care, Steve Slover. It's just not working, Jack. It's just not working. If it's not working, come and see me. I'll fix it. We've got a year guarantee. <laughs> Temperatures rising on Cairo's new show for sophisticated adults. It's Harry After Dark. <laughs> Cooking with Carlson. Brought to you by Gordon's Fish Sticks. Gordon's, eat me. Now, here's John Carlson. Welcome to Cooking with Carlson. Today we're cooking Clinton chicken. We just stuff it, turn up the heat, and watch it flop around and enjoy the scenery. Remember, we only use the right wings here. We tear off the left wings, slice them, dice them, throw them away. But first, let's start with wine. You only want to be liberal when you're cooking with wine. We start with a Ted Kennedy-sized portion here. Bring out all the flavors that we can. And, hey, these are bean sprouts. What are Bean Sprouts doing on the set of this show? What Bean Sprouts? This is not the Fremont Street Fair. <laughs> Fridays on Cairo, it's the We're Not Owned by the Mormons Anymore Hour. Welcome to Nose to Nose. I'm the moderator, Julius Pierpont Patches. Here in our studio this evening is Senator Winston Jones. Good evening, Senator. Good evening. You are sponsoring a bill to help reduce the deficit. That's correct, JP. Basically, my bill breaks the deficit problem into a simple three-step process. Whoa, we're gonna kick out the jams tonight, kids, and party. We're gonna get space, baby. Next, join the fun with Paul Brendel's Funniest Landings. <laughs> All right, that's what you see on Cairo, but stick around, because we've got lots more to show you. Come on back. Stand by for meaningful dialogue about the issues of today on the live discussion program, Tough, Hard, Thorny Issues. <laughs> Tough, Hard, Thorny Issues is brought to you by Tough Paper Towels. <laughs> tough Paper Towels. They're tough. Also brought to you by the publishers of hardcover books who say, read a hardcover book today, you ignorant imbecile. <laughs> and by the growers of Thorny Roses who remind you to be careful of the thorns. And now your host for Tough, Hard, Thorny Issues, Don Whitaker. Hello, I'm Don Whitaker, and welcome to Tough, Hard, Thorny Issues. My guest is Randall Stone of the African American Rights Coalition. Good afternoon, Mr. Stone. Good afternoon. Now, today we're going to talk about the news media and how they cover the white and African American communities. Now, Mr. Stone, in a recent editorial in the Seattle Times, you say there's a definite pattern to this reporting. That's right. What I've found is that crime reporting reflects a strong bias that legitimizes white victims but undervalues people of color. Can you give us an example? Well, for instance, major crimes in minority neighborhoods are ignored because the local media doesn't consider that newsworthy. But lesser events that happen in white neighborhoods are treated as if civilization itself is under siege. Yeah, well, Mom, Mr. Stone, isn't that a little exaggerated? I mean, uh, the fact of the matter. We interrupt this program for a special report. We now go live to Mercer Island for a breaking news story. I'm 
Ellen Carver reporting from Mercer Island, where a man's newspaper has apparently been stolen from right out in front of his house. Police confirmed that the paper was delivered at 4 o'clock, but was missing when the man arrived home in his Lexus at around 5. They say this is especially upsetting to the victim because he's a Republican. Police are warning all residents to lock their doors and to please keep all children and golden retrievers inside. We will be updating you on the story as it develops. What is this world coming to? I'm sorry about that interruption, by the way. Go on, Mr. Stone. <laughs> what I was saying is that serious crimes in black communities are ignored by the local news, while in a white neighborhood, if someone so much as has, say, their antenna busted off of their car, it's all over the front page of every... We interrupt this program to bring you this special report from Magnolia. I'm Carl Leach in Magnolia, where police are reporting a rash of broken car antennas in this predominantly white community. Now, I'm standing here with Sarah Barker, who thought she was a victim of this senseless crime until she realized she had merely lowered her antenna before going through a car wash. But, Sarah, how did it make you feel when you thought your antenna had been broken off? Well, it was truly frightening because you don't expect that kind of thing to happen in a white neighborhood like Magnolia. I mean, that's why people move here in the first place. Plus, I was very afraid that I would not be able to get Rush Limbaugh on my car radio, so I was very excited. <laughs> Unfortunately, Sarah is not a victim this time, but she is a victim in the sense that a series of crimes that should not have broken out in a white community like this have. Police are encouraging local residents to visit their local white urban stress wellness centers for counseling. I'm Carl Leach. Damn. You know, uh, I had a hood bra stolen in broad daylight uh, just a couple you of You know, this ago. has been a typical display of exactly what my point is in re reference to what I'm talking we interrupt this program to bring you this special report from Laurelhurst. I'm John Levine in Laurelhurst, where news of crimes in other white neighborhoods of stolen newspapers and broken car antennas has left this community in fear. Blockwatch Captain Walter Stevens is with us today to tell us what the mood is in this usually sedate white neighborhood. Well, it's like civilization itself is, is under siege. You know, we have our young people here are running around worried that people are coming into our neighborhood to steal their Doc Martens. We have young mothers who are afraid to let their little ones go out when they hear the music from the gelati truck. It's just that everyone is a lot more uptight and suspicious, even more than you would expect in a really uptight and suspicious neighborhood like this. Get out of my white neighborhood! You see, you see what I mean? You see? A community gripped by fear, and yet somehow we are all the poorer for it, uh, especially those who have lost their newspapers and car antennas. I'm John Levine. I said go away! <laughs> I have had just about as much of this as I can take. <laughs> well, that's, you know, that's okay, because we're out of time anyway. And it's a good example of what we'll be talking about next week when we discuss the topic, African Americans. Why so angry all the time? <laughs> Join us then on Tough Now, Kyle, the first therapy session is always difficult, so I want you to just relax and tell me truthfully what you think your problem is. I have a fear of corn. <laughs> what was that? I'm sorry, I have allergies, which have also been uh, affecting my hearing uh, lately. What was it you uh, said you have a fear of? Corn. <laughs> you okay? Yeah. Fine. Thank you. Now, you say you have a fear of corn. Yes. That's C-O-R-N, corn? Yes. Like the vegetable? Yes. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. Now, <clears throat> what do you think would cause this fear of... <laughs> corn? Corn. I don't know. Um... I, I've just, I've just always had it. Uh-huh. And when you say you're afraid of corn, does that apply to, say, corn on the cob, or would frozen corn also scare you? It doesn't seem to matter. Any type of corn scares me. I see. Um, and what about succotash? What's that? 
That's corn mixed with lima beans. <laughs> but there's corn in it? Yes. Corn and beans. <laughs> well then, yeah, that would scare me too. <laughs> Are you sure you're okay? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, thank you. I've just got a little corn. <clears throat> I mean, coal. <sighs> Sorry. Uh, now, when you say that you're afraid of corn, what is it exactly that you fear that corn will do to you? Do you think it's going to jump up and hurt you? I'm not sure. Well, maybe corn will say something to hurt your feelings. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't think so. I just... <laughs> Sorry, uh, the allergies and cold really affected my balance. Um, tell you what, why don't we role play, okay? I'll pretend I'm corn and I'm sneaking up on you, okay? Well, I don't, I don't know. You want to get over this, don't you? Well, yeah, I do. Okay, let's face your fear then. You ready? Uh, no. Here we go then. I'm not ready. I'm corn. Out. Spooky corn. No. Come to get you. No. Here I come. No, I'm not ready. Ooh, no. Scary, no, scary no, corn. No. Coming to get you. No, stop. Coming stop. Get you. <laughs> Let me get this straight. You shot me because you were afraid I was corn? Yes. <laughs> Are you laughing at me? Don't, don't laugh at me. I have a fear of being laughed at. Really? <laughs> yes. Oh, because that, that's, a, that's a very common ailment. That's something I might actually be able to help you with. Here, lie back down. Now, when was the first time you remember being laughed at? John, here's my report. The Renton police have set up a gun exchange program in which residents who turn in guns will get free video rentals for one year. However, <laughs> residents say that the way they figured if they keep their guns, they can use them to get free video rentals for a lifetime. <laughs> U.S. News and World Report recently named Evergreen State College as the top liberal arts college in the West. The magazine says Evergreen earned the ranking because its wide variety of available classes, its emphasis on independent study programs, and its massive state-of-the-art grow light system. <laughs> A new car model called the Oldsmobile Aurora is coming out this fall, and for the first year, in honor of its namesake street in Seattle, customers will be charged only 20 bucks for a lube job. <laughs> the Rolling Stones. The Rolling Stones are scheduled to play the Kingdom on December 15th. By that time, officials say all structural and cosmetic repairs should be finished, and the Kingdom should be in pretty good shape too. <laughs> Prison officials at the women's, uh, this, the women's state prison in Purdy have spent the last few weeks trying to determine if an inmate is a man or a woman. Their final test will be to move some furniture around and see if the prisoner notices. <laughs> a new Tacoma branch, the Tacoma branch of the University of Washington will be located in the old porno zone of the city. Administrators say that the only drawback is that it may take a little while for students to get used to putting a quarter in the machine every five minutes on film day. <laughs> Well, more than 500 people have been detained in recent weeks at the border in Blaine trying to sneak fruit into Canada. <laughs> Officials say that one time they found three mangoes and a nectarine hidden inside a bag of cocaine. <laughs> Ken, Ken Burns' 18-hour baseball documentary has been airing every night on Channel 9 in two-hour blocks. Tonight's episode, however, is only 10 minutes long and is entitled The Glory Years of the Seattle Mariners. <laughs> Finally... Green Lake's playfield will be closed next month through February in order to be reseeded. KVI talk show host Mike Siegel is also going to be closed for the same reason. <laughs> this has been the John Report. Thank you. Coming to PBS. There is probably no greater thrill in sports than watching somebody execute a bank shot from a three-man rod. Foosball, a thrill by Ken Burns.
an 18 and a half hour odyssey through this greatest of American games. To be in control of the destiny of a, of a bunch of little plastic men is incredibly exhilarating. The story of the sport and its greatest names. Ty Cobb Corner was absolutely the best I ever saw, but he was mean. He would glue these eensy weensy little spikes onto the feet of his tiny little men. And then there was Mordecai No Hands Brown, who got his nickname because, well, he, he didn't have any hands. He never won a game, but God was he competitive. Everybody who ever watched him play admired him, but hardly anyone did watch him because he wasn't very good. I remember seeing the great Babe Rupert play. In his prime, you know, he'd throw back a good half dozen pitches of Ole and then play 20 pit games and then go to sleep under the table. What a man. A lot of people said that foosball was strictly a man's sport, but then along came Twyla Twilly. She would lure her male opponent forward toward the table and then she would power her rod across and into that region where it would be the most devastating. Man, she was a bitch. Foosball, a really long series made possible by viewers like you who wouldn't come across during our last pledge drive. Saturday night, and we'll see you next week on Almost Live. This is the beginning of